all cut content in the Five Nights at Freddy's series. Also really quickly guys, I just want to say all this information is coming from the Cutting Room Floor, which is a website that has cut content on it, so I will link that down below. First off is Five Nights at Freddy's 1. There is an unused graphic in the game that reads, Thanks for playing the demo. Get the full version for the complete 5 day experience, plus 2 unlockable modes of gameplay. Freddy and his friends are waiting. Then there is this right here which is just text for the demo saying basically what version of the game it is. Then right here we have a look at some of the cameras that were cut from the game. So first of all we were actually going to be able to see these cones coming out of the camera which would show us where the cameras are looking. And we can see that there are actually some differences on these cameras as well. Such as the backstage camera facing the door instead of facing the back of the room. The Pirate Cove camera being next to the West Hall entrance instead of being located in front of the curtains where Foxy hides and the supply closet camera facing the back of the room from the bottom right corner instead of being in the top left corner. This stick figure asset was used to display the life counter on the screen before each night began. This can actually be seen in early footage of the game right here, and there are two versions of this texture. One is for the menu and the other one is for the 12am screen. Running out of lives would have forced the player to restart the game from night 1. Just imagine how bad that would be dying on night 5 three times and going all the way back to night 1. I'm glad Scott didn't keep this. There is also this text right here that says lives which further confirms that there was going to be lives in the game. And then there is this right here which is our power meter in the game. But it actually shows an unused fifth bar. The maximum power you can reach in the original game is 4 bars, but if you do close both doors and your light is on, this will appear for a split second if you open the camera, because both the light and the camera will be on for a short second. Next up is this unused frame right here where you can actually see the back of the office reflecting off the monitors. It makes sense why Scott cut this because obviously your player is invisible so it doesn't really make sense. Next up is an unused frame where you can see all the characters on stage staring at the camera. Now this shot is seen in the gameplay trailer but there is no way for this to actually occur in the game. Despite many people having false memories of it happening. Next up is the original newspaper that featured when the game first came out. And you can see that it was replaced because the word pizzeria was misspelled and also Scott wanted to change the phone number from 555 to 888. Then some unused text in the game is this live counter right here which says lives equal 5. And then this loading screen one right here which just says loading and yeah these can't be seen in the game. And then next up is the full sound effects for things that happen in the game. So first off is the animatronic jump scares. Now we can obviously hear the jump scare sound in the game, but it does get cut off before the full sound plays. So I'll play the full sound for you now. And then next up is the Golden Freddy scream, which also gets cut off, but it actually lasts around 16 seconds, which is pretty interesting because it only plays for around two seconds in the actual game. So I'll play a short clip of that now. Now for Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the game also featured this stickman right here which was used to showcase the lives in Five Nights at Freddy's 1. I'm guessing this was because Scott probably just pasted over Five Nights at Freddy's 1 and added to that to make Five Nights at Freddy's 2 instead of just starting from scratch. This is the same reason I believe that this live counter from Five Nights at Freddy's 1 is also in the game. Then next up is this text right here which says, Thanks for playing the demo, you should get the full version, things get a lot worse. And then next up is this crying skull right here, which is an object that was actually called Mike in the game files and has this graphic right here. This one is pretty weird. I'm not really sure what this one is meant to represent, but yeah, but it has been subject to a lot of theories in the past. Then next up is this toy Chica without her eyes and beak, which similar to toy Bonnie would appear in front of the player when he uses his mask while she is in the vent. And yeah, I actually thought this one was in the game, but it's actually not. The screen will just be black when she appears and you put on your mask, which I find pretty interesting. This did however make it into Ultimate Custom Night later down the line, so maybe I'm just remembering that. Next up is this full body sprite of the puppet, which shows how it's controlled. You can see that it is actually held up by these strings to move around, but yeah, the graphic wasn't actually used in the game. Then there is this image in the game files, which is the last frame of the puppet's jump scare. The only difference being that the white pupils are gone in this screenshot. Then next up once again the newspapers was changed from 188 Faz Fazbear to 155 Faz Fazbear. It's speculated that this was done so that if this was a real number 
nobody would be getting harassed and called by a bunch of Five Nights at Freddy's fans, but I'm not sure about that one. Then this one is pretty well known, there was actually gonna be a toxic meter in the game, which would appear when players wore the mask. When this bar eventually filled up, it would start flashing red repeatedly until it reaches zero again. So yeah, this was basically gonna be a feature to make sure that you wouldn't wear the mask too much in the game, but was eventually replaced with the feature of having to flash Foxy in the hallway. Then we have this piece of text right here that says set max that would set all the characters to 20 in the custom night screen. Now this actually does work in the game, but it's placed outside of the customization screen, so you can't use it. I'm not sure why Scott cut this out because it seems to be a pretty helpful feature, but he most likely had his reasons. Then for some obscured graphics in the game, which are basically just graphics that we can't see the full image of. First off is this Toy Bonnie image right here. Now this is the one that appears when you put your mask on and he's in the office, but we can't really see the full thing because we have the mask obscuring it. So yeah, pretty cool to see this one. Then we have this JJ graphic right here. You can't really see the full thing on this one either because she is below the desk. But unfortunately, it's still not a full animatronic and Scott only modeled the top half of her face. But it's still cool to see anyways. Now next up is this text that says it's him which is actually located out of frame on the screen used post cutscene and can never be seen. Then similar to the it's him text, there is this loading text which is located out of frame as well and cannot be seen in the game. Then for cutoff sounds, we only have one in this game which is the animatronic jump scare, which usually cuts out after one second. So I'll play you the full thing here. Then there are a few weirdly named files in the game. So first off, the music that plays after you beat the game is titled musicbox2.wav, which matches up with musicbox.wav from the first game, which was the music that plays during the power outage scene. FNAF 2 does not have a power outage mechanic, however Scott himself said that he was going to include the power mechanic from the first game before deciding to leave it out, which does explain the file name. Then, I'm not really sure if this one is cut content, but during the night one phone call, phone guy refers to the prize corner exclusively as the prize counter, despite the in-game camera tech still referring to it as the prize corner. This means that the prize corner could have originally been named the prize counter, but was changed later, and Scott just forgot to change the audio when he recorded it. Now for Five Nights at Freddy's 3. So first off, there was originally going to be a button to seal the vents, and there is actually footage of this you can see here. So yeah, it was going to be a button instead of just having you double click on the vent to seal it. And then next up, again, we have the lives little stickman guy. So yeah, again, I think that Scott just copy and pasted over Five Nights at Freddy's 2 instead of starting from scratch. And we also have this lives thing once again. Then we have text right here that says, Thanks for playing the demo, you should get the full version. Things get a lot worse. And then this text right here that says, Demo EXT, which was also found in the Five Nights at Freddy's 3 troll game, as well as the Five Nights at Freddy's 2 extended demo. Then once again we have the seal vent text, which was going to be used on the button before it was taken out. Then we have this, which is just showcasing the version number of the game. Then we have this right here, which is actually the version number from Five Nights at Freddy's 2, which was probably just left over from that game. And then this one's really interesting. We have graphics that exist for a seventh custom night, even though there are only six nights in the game. And there is also this green colored variant of night two for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Also, there are these leftover sprites of the puppet. So I'm not really sure if Scott planned on including them in the game or if these are just left over from Five Nights at Freddy's 2. But yeah, these shots right here that are in in the game were used as the hallucinations you could see on the cameras in FNAF 2, which I will show on screen now. Then for the obscured graphics, we have this one right here of Springtrap walking, which is pretty funny because usually his legs are obscured by the window, but now we can see that he's actually not moving his legs at all. Then there's this right here, which is the shot we see when Springtrap is staring at us through the glass. And it's really cool that Scott actually modeled his full body instead of just his upper half. Then we have Phantom Mangle's head, which we can usually only see half of, but we can see the full thing here. Next up is Five Nights at Freddy's 4, and this first one is extremely cool. So originally there was an unused ending event, which was meant to display after beating 420 mode. And the ending is identical to the chest ending as seen after completing Nightmare, but the player was actually able to remove the locks. Still though, you can't open the chest, but it's just really cool to think that Scott was actually going to allow us to open the chest at one point. Then next up is something relating to the Nightmare jump scare. 
So when Nightmare jump scares you, it sends you back to the main menu. However, if you look in the game files, it was originally supposed to send the player to a different frame that was removed from the game. What this frame was is still unknown. Then for unused graphics, we have this one right here, which is really cool. It's basically for the demo and it just says to be continued in the full version. But this picture of Fredbear is really cool and I've actually never seen it before. Then there is also this demo text right here. And then this star animation, which was most likely originally going to be used as the stars on the main menu. Next up is this chapter text right here. It's assumed that this was going to be used for the mini games since the text doesn't match the other fonts seen in the game, but we have no idea on this one. Now for FNAF World, first off there is some unused graphics. So first off is this demo picture right here which was meant for the demo. And then there are these four demo images right here which basically just says the end of the demo, all that stuff. And then next up is this version thing, obviously just displaying the version of the game. And then there was actually this graphic right here which said happiest day, but was actually removed since update 2 introduced more characters and took up the entire screen. Then there's this character right here named Brow Boy. Now this is an unused version of Brow Boy that can be found in the game files, which hints that Brow Boy was originally going to be a regular enemy just like Ball Boy. Then there are these hidden stars in the game that are actually hidden off screen and cannot be seen for some reason. Then something really cool is this fully opened version of the box. Now there is no actual coding for the object, so it may have just been thrown in as an easter egg for the people who go through the game files, but we're not entirely sure. We know that Scott didn't actually want to show us what was inside the box after nobody had figured out the story of the fourth game, instead opting to just close the box forever, putting the quote, some things are best left forgotten forever. Then we have this little turtle guy right here, which was recycled from Slumberfish, which is another game that Scott Cawthon had made, and was meant to be used during a fishing mini game, but never actually appeared. Also, just really quickly guys, if you are enjoying the video so far, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Then we have this unused version of the cupcake in the game files. Now there's not much of a difference between the unused one and the used one, but they are doing a different animation, so there's that. Then there's this unused attack in the game which is called Toxic Song that has no coding attached to it in the game files. Then there's this unused status titled Poison which shows that there was meant to be enemies that would actually inflict poison damage on us but was never actually put in the original game. Then there's this unused chip right here which has the curse of haunting. There's also the full version of the victory theme that will play for about 40 seconds after winning a fight but in the game will only play for about 10 seconds before the game takes you back to the over world. So yeah, another one of those sound effects that just gets cut off in the actual game. Now there's this unused sound in the game which is said by JJ where she actually swears. So I'm guessing this was never going to be added to the original game, but Scott just had it in the game files because he thought it was funny. So I'll play that for you guys right now. Now I'm going to kick your ass. Wait, what? I, I can't see that. Then for some unused text, there is this text right here which says, Well congratulations, you beat a fictional monster from a fictional game. Bravo. Big deal. Then there is this text right here which says, The End 1, which is off screen during every ending of the game. If you keep following him, you will only finish a story. There is something more important for you to do. This dialogue is the last thing that Fredbear says in the first time he tells the player to find the clock. However, because of an error in the programming, the game instead automatically brings the player to a loading screen when it appears, making it never seen in the actual game. Then there is this obscured graphic right here which says game over. Now this graphic does appear when you get a game over, but is almost impossible to see in the actual game. Next up on our list is sister location. So first off is unused graphics, and our first one is this gold star right here which was meant to show once you completed the game. Then this text right here that says version 1.0, which was an image that wasn't used in sister location but was just meant to show what version of the game it was. Then there's an unused image of Ballora being shocked and lit up at the same time which isn't shown in the game, but this one is really cool to see. Then there's this red arrow in the game files, which is titled Active 2, and this could have been the original way that you would go back instead of pressing S 
when you needed to turn around in the office and then this right here which was a position map and would basically highlight what room you were in on the map instead of just showing the full thing this layout of the map is actually slightly different in the final game as well with the image showing two rooms connected to funtime auditorium and two rooms connected to the blora gallery as opposed to the final game where there are three rooms connected to the funtime auditorium and just one connected to the blora gallery then there's this little smiley face in the game which was used during the real ending cutscene but is not actually visible it is assumed that scott used this as a reference to understand where the player's head would be during the cutscene so yeah i think this one is pretty funny then there was originally going to be a game over screen which had circus baby staring at the player and i've actually never seen this image before and i feel like a lot of people haven't so yeah this one's really cool then there's this mini arena picture right here and this is used as an easter egg in the player's home but you can't see the bottom half as it's covered by the popcorn then for some unused sound effects in the file there are two unused voice clips meant to play in the circus control room so i'll play those for you now glass pressure trigger please do not push against the glass motion trigger technician control now next up is this blue screen right here which was originally thought to be cut from the game which was actually later found out to be accessible through an easter egg where you would hold 0 and 1 simultaneously on your keyboard while in the Ballora gallery to make it appear. Now for my personal favorite game in the series, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator. So first off with unused graphics, we have this blueprint right here of Molten Freddy. Now this was meant to be featured with the rest of the blueprints in the game, but was cut for unknown reasons and can only be accessed throughout the game files. There are also these four buttons which were cut in the game, and these were most likely meant for Henry's tape recorder, but due to the tape recorder having real buttons to interact with, all four of these buttons were not used in the game. Then there was an earlier version of the performance bonus seen during the tycoon mode and then we also get to see some unused animation so before the update on december 11th the jump scare for each of the animatronics had different lighting and animation after the update these animations were replaced by better more fitting animations now you may have noticed while playing pizzeria simulator that the jump scares are kind of fast and stiff but this actually isn't the case in the game files so as we can see here the full animations do exist for these jump scares but just don't display properly in the engine so these are really cool to look at now during the tycoon mode there's only one room that can be edited by the player but by looking at the unused code it seems that the player would have been able to unlock more rooms and this has actually been re-implemented into the game which you can see on this video right here Now the next game up is Ultimate Custom Night, and first off are some obscured graphics. So first off is whenever Balloon Boy and JJ show up in the event, you can only see their faces, but we can actually see in the game files their full body sprites right here. Then similar to Five Nights at Freddy's 2, when JJ appears under the desk, her face is obscured, but we can see the full thing in the game files. Interestingly enough, this version of JJ actually shows a tiny bit more of her face than the Five Nights at Freddy's 2 one, which means Scott actually went back in and got a new version of the model. Then there is this graphic right here of Rockstar Freddy, which shows when you first boot up the game and earn a power up, but his legs are hidden beneath the screen. Then we have this graphic right here of Springtrap, which is really cool, which appears in the third office, but is placed behind the office image. Then just like that previous Springtrap image, there is also this one right here. Now this graphic is used, but the silhouette is unseen due to it being placed on a black background. For unused graphics, there is this right here, which was intended to be in the main menu but was removed in favor of the offices power-ups and challenges buttons but strangely enough in the menu image on the steam screenshots you can actually see this in the top right corner next up is this animation of bonnet right here now this was in sister location but was brought over to ultimate custom night and was never used in the game then there is this demo image right here which reads in the demo version you can only have a maximum of 2,000 points active before starting a level which was only in the demo version that Scott Cawthon had sent to multiple YouTubers. Then there's some reused FNAF World save data. So when you trigger the secret with Old Man Consequences where you end up in the fourth layer area from FNAF World, the game registers a save file called info and adds it in a value called bgame4 equals 1. Now this save file has no purpose in Ultimate Custom Night, but FNAF World can read it, causing a trophy of Freddy to appear on the file select screen. 
then there was actually going to be mobile keyboard shortcuts. Now keyboard shortcuts cannot be done on the mobile version, however if the game were to be played on an android emulator, the keyboard shortcuts would still be fully functional. Okay guys so I was planning on ending it there because I was just going to cover the Scott Cawthon FNAF games, but I decided to actually throw Help Wanted in there as well just because I really like this game. So yeah, Help Wanted is next up. So there is this one of Withered Foxy, which doesn't have any textures, but we can actually see he is missing his left arm for some reason. Then we have this Withered Bonnie and Chica models, which don't have any textures, but were eventually finished up in the final game. Then there are these four Blacklight animatronics, which were unused versions of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. And if viewed in the Blacklight mode, these variants will appear behind the lobby stage curtain, as well as in the cut showtime scene. Now all of them interestingly enough have textures besides Foxy, and they appear to be based on this merchandise line right here, which has these Blacklight animatronics. Then there are Burnt Freddles, which are alternate versions of the Freddles that have a burnt texture. This was most likely going to be used for the build a mango level in the spooky mansion section of the Curse of Dreadbear DLC, as these textures were found from that DLC. Then there is this little guy right here, which is a model of a doll-like figure that has no textures, and was most likely used for testing the plush trap sections, as the animations match that character, including one of him jumping off of a chair. Then there is this one of Glitch Trap right here, which is a leftover untextured model of Springtrap, but they titled it as Glitch Trap for some reason, and has the same jump scare associated. Then for a few props, there is this untextured table, which was referred to as Norman Bedroom in the game files, leading many people to believe that that was actually the name of the player character. However, it turned out that this model was actually just purchased online, and Norman Bedroom was the default name upon purchase. Then we have an earlier look at the cupcake model, which was less detailed and included a more rough edged look which was later replaced because this ended up being a fan-made asset. Then the final two unused models, there is this Rise of Franken Freddy model, which seems to be the original name for the Curse of Dreadbear DLC. And then there is this Curse of Dreadbear model right here, which was actually a full 3D model, but in the game is a 2D texture. Now for unused graphics in the game, there are these two unused textures, which were apparently meant for Spring Bonnie. And then there are these early cupcake textures right here. There is also this Freddy Files picture, which is a picture of the FNAF 2 map, as seen in the official FNAF guidebook. This was most likely used as a reference when designing the FNAF 2 map for the game. Then there are these coming soon icons, right here, which were used when the Curse of Dreadbear DLC was first released, before the rest of the levels were brought in, but these graphics ended up not being used. And then there is a Silver Parasol Games logo, and this logo is actually for the in-universe game studio, Silver Parasol Game, and this was used in earlier versions of the game, which actually showed up in the title screen, but it was removed in an update to avoid confusion which was a good call because I was extremely confused about this one. Then there's this early helpy image right here, which has him dressed up as a vampire and was used in pictures for the Curse of Dreadbear DLC. Then there is this map right here, which is an unused location, but according to the game files was related to a scrapped multiplayer mode, which would have been really cool to see in the game. Then there is this unused celebrate poster in the game files, which is actually a fan made render, which explains why it was replaced further down the line in development, because it was most likely just used as a placeholder. Then there's this little bit image, which is directly taken from Ultimate Custom Night, but it doesn't actually appear in the final game. Then really interestingly, there is some unused level icons, which most of them were found in the Curse of Dreadbear DLC, but can still be found in the game files, and many of these show early layouts of versions of the levels, so I'll show a couple of these on screen now, but yeah, they're really cool. And then there are also a few hidden images in the game files, so basically a slideshow of showbiz pizza animatronic and endoskeleton photos, actually used to appear on the prize counter's television after pressing a red button from the exotic butter's basket. These images were removed from the final game's release because people were basically comparing these images to real showbiz pizza animatronics. All the images can still be found in the game files under a hidden images file folder. Now for some unused animations, there is an animation of the freddles quickly going under the bed, and it is really funny to see when there's no bed. Then there's this glitch trap jump scare right here, which was a scrapped animation and just shows Springtrap kind of twitching around I guess. Then there's an animation for Grim Foxy howling, 
Then there's an alternate animation of Balloon Boy jump scaring the player, but it's unknown what this actually was intended for in the game. Then there's a few unused strings of code. So first off, there was some code referring to a multiplayer mode, which we can see right here. And then there's this code right here, which shows that the withered animatronics were actually meant to appear in the hallway levels of the Curse of Dreadbear DLC. And then for some unused text, there's some cut text which refers to a mode titled Fun with Baby Trap. Now this mode was not entirely scrapped, but instead was an old version of the plush baby level, which seemed to use the same mechanics as plush traps level. Then there's this text right here that says activate glitch trap, and we are not really sure what this one means. Next up is this one which says welcome to Saul's debug menu. Now nobody knows who Saul is, we're guessing it's just a dev in the game, but it's entirely up for speculation. Then there's an unused event that was meant to happen during the main menu. By pressing a button behind the monitor, Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica would begin dancing and singing using an unused original song. Although the button itself was included in the game, it does nothing. And according to Scott Cawthon, it was because he could not find the right voice for Freddy Fazbear, and that was the reason that this feature was removed from the game. However, the animations of these animatronics performing is still available through this footage right here. Then there is some developer text in the game. So during the Mangle Vent Repair section, there was a note left by a developer that was actually out of bounds that states that another vent was placed on the ceiling originally, but it had been removed. Then there is a Nightmare Fredbear action figure icon, which is really interesting because Nightmare Fredbear was actually colored brown instead of yellow, which is really cool to see. And you can actually see this in the reveal trailer for Help Wanted really quickly, where Fredbear was actually originally colored brown. This was most likely just a mistake that some developer made, but it's still really cool to see. Okay guys, so that is it for all the cut content in the Five Nights at Freddy's series, obviously excluding Security Breach. So if you guys want to see me cover that in a separate video, let me know down below. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.